Hi everybody! In this video, I wanted to show all of the completed pages I have done with Kirby Rosane's World Within Worlds. And I'm going to do this in chronological order so that you can see which ones I have started with and how it has progressed over the course of the two years. So our first page here is these two beautiful fish. And this was done on the 27th of July, 2022. Um, this was inspired, if you are familiar with Sarah Renee Clark, when she did her tutorial coloring this exact fish using Derwent Intense Pencils. And I've linked that tutorial right up here. The reason I bought this book actually was because of that video. I was so impressed with these beautiful fish she was creating with these really cool looking pencils. So I went ahead and I bought this book and I bought Durant Inktense pencils and I followed her tutorial um, of how to make these really, really wonderful color combinations um, with um, the golden yellows going into the um, purples and the blues. I've never, I've never seen colors move like that before, at least these combinations. Um, of course, I made some changes to the initial tutorial. For example, I modified the fish completely to be fish that um, I preferred, and I changed the background um, as well to just making it pure dark with some of the bubbles around. I also completed it because she hadn't done this side, and so that's the differences between her tutorial and mine. Um, but it was really a wonderful, wonderful introduction to the Derwent um, Inktense pencils. And I got so um, inspired by them that I kept going. And the second piece that I did was this one right up over here, which was completed on the 29th of July, which was only two days later. So this is, to this day, the fastest spread I have ever done. I cannot believe, actually, that I finished it in two days. At this time, I spent around a month on a spread. Um, I just, I go really slowly. I go at my own pace normally. But this one um, was inspired again by Sarah Renee Clark, this time using her color cubes. And so I found that this lion looks like the lion in her volume two. So that's number 444. And I color matched um, using her coloring companion to these um, colors over here and then use that to create this lion. And as you can see, there's some lighting that's coming in on the right-hand side. I was trying to mimic that here by having this be a bit yellower and this being a bit darker. I'm not sure if it really looks like lights hitting here, considering that none of the other elements show light coming this way. Um, but it was, it was my first time really practicing with light coming in from one direction. Um, and with the background, I just used um, the sand color with a Prismacolor pencil um, to smooth it out because the Derwent Inktense that I used was blotchy because I still wasn't figuring out how to use Derwent Inktense on a background without making it look blotchy. Um, but overall, I like the monochrome effect, um, and I suppose this is the first of my monochrome, monochrome yellows that I've done on the 5th of August, 2022. Um, this one here was colored um, more whimsically. I sat down with a friend while she was doing her own art project, and as we were chatting and catching up, I was able to distract myself and then just color these entire flamingos in. Normally, I would have just panicked over it and just really, really meticulously and slowly figured out what colors I wanted to do. It would have been a slower process, but just being kind of distracted with her um, was a really wonderful way of getting these in and getting these done very beautifully, just using some photo references of um, flamingos um, to, to guide me, including um, the way that their beaks are supposed to work. And then for the water, this is the first time I've done this ripple effect with the water. I covered the original lines with a white Posca pen. Actually, no, that's a uni ball. Um, it's a like, um, jelly roll pen. And I added some of reflections of the elements in the water itself um, to kind of make it pop. And it took me a while to figure out how I wanted to do the water because I didn't want it to be blue, blue. But I managed to do this very pale blue um, that still shows that it's like water and then instead had um, um, just like a yellowy sky because I didn't want any all elements that are water to be blue. I think that you can have water elements that are not bright blue and that can just add some variation to the way in which people often color water. And so this one was completed the 28th of September. So it took like a good month. And so to get started with it, I wasn't sure 
how to go about it. So I began actually with the tutorial of this dragon from My Colorful Country Life. And again, that's linked right up there. And I used her color combo starting with the underbelly with the yellows. And then once once I managed to start with that, my artist block and the little rut I was in just burst and I was able to leave her tutorial video to do the rest on my own because I just really wanted it to be this fiery dragon um, in this black night sky. And so I kept it again, I guess another monochrome-esque piece with um, all of the different reds bleeding into the yellows. Um, and I was just really proud of how I was able to get such variety of color um, with with such limited palettes. Um, but it, the variety came just with using all of the pencils in my arsenal that were within these color ranges. So uh, if you've seen with her video, there's actually eight colors in here, if you could believe it. So zooming in, it's like pale over there and then dark over there. Those are eight different coloring pencils um, to get that blend going over there. And similar to these sections up here, just going from that dark all the way to that light, it was quite a few pencils to try to figure out um, how I was going to get that flow going. But I enjoyed this process very much. It was a very fun one to, to do. Um, zooming out a tiny bit. Okay, so that one was number four. Coming over to number five, turning one page over, um, this is the atlantis -y underwater theme, and this was done a month later in November. Two months later, sorry, in November. So it took me around two months to complete this. Um, and so the color combinations that I was using with this um, were very fun and um, ones that I was just coming up with myself, not necessarily ones that... I was using anything for um, but these are all the different colors that I used with it so just kind of going into this like artichokey feel with the city um, trying to get some really nice bright blues here um, with the with the peacock blue and the cerulean blue for the ocean and then um, just an insane amount of these fall orangey reds um, for the rest of the elements um, so it's kind of hard to see that I had so many colors in here, but I did to try to to try to really make it pop. Um, and so I was really proud of it up until I did the background. And this is again where I'm coming to um, some difficulty because I decided that even though I had a Prismacolor foreground, I was initially um, going to have a um, Derwent Intense background. And so I started with that and then it ended up being blotchy and then I switched to the Prisma colors, but the tooth of the paper was so killed that the color just wouldn't stick. And it was just this, 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 it felt a bit like a mess. But you know, I worked at it. I, I darkened the border a tiny bit to make it just seem like it's glowing. Um, so I'm, in retrospect, I am still proud of it. Um, it's like if you zoom all the way out, the blotchiness is not as apparent as, you know, if you zoom all the way, zoom all the way in. Um, so overall it's still it's still really fun it took forever just with with all of the details and deciding like which colors do i put where and it looks altogether monochrome but there are just so many colors at play here to try to to try to add some dimension um to the piece like even over here with the light and then going dark there and using those french grays to to, to get the whites there um, but it was it was really fun. It was really fun. And that one was number five So coming into number six, this is the last one of the year 2022 and for this one I made my first ever YouTube color along video, which I will link up there um, Not the best music for that video. So I'm sorry in advance if you watch it and the music is a bit annoying I, I had no idea what I was doing. Like I said, I was my first one but like I explained in that video, the concept for this was the idea of these little fairy creatures. What if they're evil when they're trapping in the unicorns? And we all know that unicorns are colorful, but what if that is also because unicorns are the reason, they're like the prisms that bring color to our world, you know? And that prism idea is, is with all of the little 
um, crystal elements and prism and prison, you could think the cage imprisoning the unicorns and, and the magic of the color. Um, so it's like greedy fairies trying to trap unicorns, ended up accidentally hurting their world. But if the cage gets open, um, light can just pop out and uh, bring, bring, bring color back into the world with like this magical rainbow. Um, so, so that was the effect that I was trying to do for that one and used a ton of different grays for the background. So that is the number six, the last one for 2022. Enter 2023, we have um, the 26th of January, um, these two that I completed and I'm still very much in love with them. Um, these ones were done, um, the background was Neocolor Pastels, um, the Neocolor 2s, and I just have like a very small set of them, and it's on my Christmas wish list to get a few more because this effect was really cute, but I just have this small set of 15, um, and I used like these, these, these colors over here, um, and, and like a tiny bit of black to emphasize that purple, um, to get the sky in. And, um, it was really fun to do. Um, I did it with a Prismacolor overlay to smooth it out. And when I was doing that, I noticed with the blotchy areas, it looked like clouds. So I took my white Prismacolor and I just scrubbed away until I was able to actually recreate these cloud effects. So that was really fun for me to do. Um, and then as we come over to this one on this side, I wanted it to be a matching set as though it's a single spread, which is why um, I'm considering this both number seven instead of number seven and number eight. Um, and I was using the, I think, Color with Claire um, tutorial of how to do this like aged brass, and I'll link that right over there. That helped me out. So, um, so yeah, this is one of the ones I was really happy doing. Um, all right, so jumping over to this one for my next one. Um, this one was done when I was again feeling like I was in a bit of an art rut. I wasn't really, um, I wasn't really following anything. I was just doing je ne sais quoi as I was coloring, coloring it in. And then I was trying to keep some of the color elements the same throughout. So using the same reds, using the same greens, the same yellows, the same blues, so that, that they feel like they're, they're, they're a working set. Um, and that was actually a really fun exercise. Um, this was done on, finished by the 1st of April, 2023. So around two months um, between the last one. Um, and it was, it was fun to kind of play with colors and show how when you have different sets of colors, you can make different ones predominant over the others. Um, and I was also trying to add a bit of variety to the skin tones with the Russian dolls. And it was my first time successfully doing a full black background. And it was just a Posca pen. And then on top of the Posca pen, I used a uh, Prismacolor black um, pencil. And of course, that killed my black pencil. And after that, I had no more Prismacolor black pencil, which is very sad. I have to switch to a luminance now because you can't buy those here. Uh, but yeah, that was the eighth one that I completed. Ninth one, this one also has a color along that I released recently. Um, and these ones were done with Derwent ink tents and um, with a Prismacolor background. And I really love just like the monochromatic blue effect that we have here. So I guess this is sort of my third monochromatic piece, if you will. Um, and it was just really fun to just build and develop um, just different shades of blue that still are within the same families um, to add that level of variety and just have this this, this beautiful luminance glowing effect um, um, around around the rabbits. So one of my favorite pages, I think, um, was really, really satisfying to do and to film uh, if you want to check out that video. And then finally, the last one that I've done, and this was on the 9th of August, so last month, um, was these trees over here. And so I wanted to just have a bit of a bouquet effect in the background. So I was, I was, I was working on creating little bouquet circles. And then I added in these extra trees to kind of create the sense of being deep, deep within a forest, um, and having this in the foreground and those in the background. So, um, I think the lighting of it worked out pretty well and the effect of it worked out pretty well. And then, um, just had it be like, 
a midnight monochrome blue on the inside because I wasn't sure what else to do that wouldn't necessarily clash with the rest of them completely. So there you go. Those are the 10 different pages that I've done in Worlds Within Worlds. Um, thank you very much for watching and I hope you have a lovely day. Bye.